Welcome! In this video we're also going to drive an LED, but not with the minimal Arduino that we created in the previous video, but with an Arduino on a strip board. You can see a still packaged strip board here together with a 28 pin IC socket on which we can press the Atmega328 microcontroller. In addition you will need the same components that we used for the minimal Arduino. In this video we will show how to design the strip board in KeyCAD. The components can then be soldered to the strip board to create the actual Arduino. We will build on the previous KeyCAD project, so let's open the schematic layout editor where we see the schematic of the minimal Arduino that we created in the previous video. We are going to use the exact same schematic, so we leave it like this. Let's click this button to assign PCB footprints to our symbols. You can see that the Atmega has already a footprint assigned to it. Let's assign a footprint to the capacitors. For a strip board, we will only use through hole technology. Our capacitors are disc capacitors, and the ones that I have have a diameter of about 5mm, a width of 2.5mm, and a pitch of 2.5mm as well. To verify whether we can use the footprint to place the component, we can right click it and view the footprint. We can measure the distances between the pads and verify whether we can fit the pins inside the pads. We can measure the outline of the component. We can view a 3D representation to verify whether this footprint allows us to place the component on the circuit board. I want to stress that the footprint does not necessarily have to match the component exactly, it is good enough if the footprint helps us to place the component. For our capacitors, this footprint allows us to properly place them on the strip board. Let's close the 3D model and the footprint viewer and double click on this component to assign it to C1. Double click again to assign it to C2. To assign the LED, we go to LED through hole technology and since our LED has a diameter of 5mm we just select this one. View it. Measure it. View the 3D model. and select it. To assign the resistor we pick from resistor through hole technology we have an axial of 6.3 millimeters, a diameter of 2.5 millimeters and the pitch of 10 mm sounds about right. Let's view it. Measure it. View the 3D model. And select it. For the crystal we may have to do a bit of searching and I found that the HC18U vertical fits our crystal. When we view it, we can measure that the pitch is 5 mm
The length is about 11 millimeters. And the width is about 5 millimeters, which looks right. The 3D model shows us that this footprint looks like it could help us to place the item, so let's select it. We have now assigned the footprints, so let's close the Assign Footprint window to return to our schematic. The next step in our design process is generating a netlist. A netlist defines how components are connected together. We click on the Generate Netlist button, leave it at the PCB New format and generate it. We store it under the proposed name. We can now close the schematic layout editor to open the PCB layout editor. Let's click on the PCB layout editor and we see an empty space for our layout. At the right, we see several layers of which the two top ones are the most important, the front copper layer and the back copper layer. The back copper layer will represent the strips on our strip board and we will limit ourselves to only horizontal tracks on this layer. The front copper layer will represent wires that can be soldered onto the board. These wires can in principle have any direction except for horizontal, but most often for strip boards they are only used vertically. We will do the same. In the middle we see a dark red layout of the size of an A4 paper in which we will design the strip board. The first thing we are going to do is to set up the tracks. We open the board setup, go to design rules and add two tracks. We add a track width with two millimeters that will represent the strips at the back and we will add a track of 0.5 millimeters to represent the vertical wires on the front. We also define a via, which is a hole that connects front and back tracks. We create one with a width of the widest track, 2 millimeters, with a drill hole of 1 millimeter, since the holes in our strip board are about this size. We then press OK. We will now set up the tracks, vias and grid for our use case. We set the track to the 2mm one that we've just defined, the via also to the one that we've just defined and we set the grid to 2.54mm since this is the distance between the holes on our strip board. When we zoom in we can see that each white dot can represent a hole in our strip board. We can now load the netlist that gives us all the footprints associated with the symbols in the schematic. We press the load netlist button. Open the correct netlist file. Update the PCB and place the components. We can see our components and white wires between them, which mean that these paths need to be connected somehow. Before we place the components properly, we have to define the edges of our strip board. Let's use the largest component for that to minimize counting holes. Let's select the at mega and place it somewhere in the middle. Using the physical strip board and the DIP28 socket, I can see that vertically I can place the socket once and have one row of holes left. So vertically I should have 15 holes. Let's select edge.cuts layer and draw a vertical line covering 15 holes alongside the Atmega.
my strip board has corners without strips and holes. So let's take that into account in the corners. Horizontally, I can place two atmegas and have two holes left, so let's place the atmega in our layout and draw a horizontal line alongside it. Repeat it and add two holes and draw the corner again. and finish the outside edges of our strip board. We have just defined the outside edges of our strip board and each white dot represents a hole in our strip board. Now that we know the outside edges of our strip board, we can place the components. Let's start with the Atmega and let's place it in the middle and let's put the little notch on top. We place it vertically because each pin has its own horizontal strip in this way. Since the crystal and the two capacitors are tightly connected to the Atmega and ground, let's first place the crystal close to the pins of the Atmega. You can see a diagonal line here now that is not possible with our horizontal strips. We will solve this later. Let's first place the capacitors rotating them to match the connections horizontally as much as possible. Again, we see some diagonal lines, but we will solve this later. Placing the LED and resistor is easy compared to the previous components and we don't have diagonals. Since our components have wires, we can just move the paths to ensure that no diagonals exist. 
To do this, let's select the leftmost capacitor, press E to edit it, and select free to be able to freely move the pads. Let's then move the pad to the strip underneath it. Let's repeat that for the crystal as well. Note that for the crystal it means that a wire has to be bent inward a bit. We can now add tracks to connect the components. So let's select the back copper layer, the tracks button, and add tracks between the components. Note that the white lines disappear when components are connected and that we restrict ourselves to horizontal tracks here to mimic the strips on the strip board. We can see that the two ground pins on the Mega should be connected. In principle, KeyCAD allows us to create a track here as well, like this. However, such a track is not possible because of our strip board restrictions. And by the way, since the strips are there by default, it means that each pin on one side of the Mega is connected automatically to the other pin on the other side, something that is not correct. We can solve this by creating an area where tracks are not allowed. Let's add such a keep out area. Now, if we try to add a track, KiCad will not allow us to do so in the same way. To make the connection, we will use vertical wires and connect them to an unused strip with vias. The vertical wires are represented by the front copper layer. Let's create a horizontal line first. Press V to add a via. If you look carefully, you can see a little pad appear. On a click, we will change to the front copper layer where we can add a vertical line. We press V again to add a via. Click to switch to the back copper layer, add a strip, press V for a via and create a vertical line and again connect it to the horizontal line. Let's change the vertical lines and change the track width to 0.5 millimeters to make them look like a wire more. Choose the following menu. We filter the front copper layer and the action is to set it to a track width of 0.5 mm. Let's make the power and ground tracks explicit to understand how to connect the strip board to power. Add vias to show that wires can be connected here. We are almost done, but since the strips are present by default on a strip board, we need to verify whether unwanted horizontal connections exist. 
If we look carefully, we can see that pin 23 is connected to the anode of the LED. Let's add a keepout area there. We can change the grid temporarily to create a keepout area for this strip. In the physical world, the connections between the strips in the keepout areas need to be broken, often done by drilling. This completes the design of our layout for an Arduino on a strip board. Good luck soldering!